everyone, it's me, Sean Capri. I'm glad you're here because you're listening to the most horse powerful podcast on the internet. It's the Xbox Drive. I'm on a Skype call with my friend Ryan Turford and on our journey today, Ryan played a whole bunch of games and guess what? I played some games as well. So jump on into the Xbox Drive. Ball Greater than X. Hello, Sean Capri. That was a nice ball you got there. Uh, I forgot to say weatherman on the moose. Whether, did I even say your name? David, I, I uh, blacked out a little you bit. You said did my I, name. You totally yeah. said my name, but you didn't what say weatherman on the moose, which means we keep going. Damn no, it. No oh, reason the, to re record dude, it, Sean. I don't even know this what I was thinking now. just now. Oh, my gosh. I'm so embarrassed. How even like we could do this over again? Do you want to start over? Nope, nope. We're keep, we're going. This is the show. <laughs> this, this is, is the show. Yep. One just take. like just like you see on we the we the gamer cast, Sean. You know, once you just roll into it, that's the show. Yeah, yeah. Stopping that's, and starting again, it's no good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyways, how are you, Sean? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you very much. I've I had a really good start to the day. I got a little yoga in and. uh I'm pretty bad at it. I'm not going to lie to you. Right? And she, you know, especially you're watching the little video and she's like, mm-hmm. just do this and like, keep your balance. Ha ha ha. And I'm just like, I am dying here. And my cat Max is like, what are you doing? And he's meowing at me and he's throwing off my Zen, but I feeling good, man. I got the juices flowing like nice and nice and early. So, um, uh, so my juices are flowing. How are your juices today, Ryan? I mean, I'm okay. The weather's kind of nice outside today. Damn it. I you asked know, about your juices <laughs> specifically. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, what else? Do you, what do you want from me? I woke up at like noon today and, you know, oh, played some the video life. games in bed. And then I rolled out of bed and came over here to record this wow. podcast. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just kind of starting to, the day of the day. But I'm, doing, right, I'm doing okay. Doing yeah, okay. good, man. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you know, starting the week out and off in style. I mean, I've been playing lots of games, so we'll talk about that in a bit. But before we do that. We got to clean the garage a little bit. So folks at home, if you want to support the show, there's a number of awesome ways to do that. Number one, so you can subscribe to us on your podcast feed of choice. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Music, apparently all the places you find podcasts. So check us out on your past podcast feed of choice and make sure ding, 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 hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, also hit that subscribe button, but also ding, 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 ring that bell for some notifications to be notified about all of our newest videos. Also like subscribe, share, share, comment on the video. Tell us what some of your favorite Xbox games uh, that are coming to Game Pass this month that we're going to talk about later in the show. Let us all know all that in the comments below. And then last but not least, if you want early access to this and all of our shows, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. It's how you do that. Throw a little tip in the old tip jar and out comes content. And I lied, Sean. One last thing. Yumi Capri Day. It's finally happening again, April 15th, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on YouTube, youtube.com slash Yumi Capri. We will be live streaming all day, doing live podcasts. We're going to have some mega announcements as well as all kinds of great stuff. So come hang out with us April 15th. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's a holiday anyways. I mean, it's it's uh, Good Friday. So, I mean, you could either spend the day with your family or come spend the day with your podcast family with us at Yumi Capri. Yeah, so the go. whole the whole dang day. I was not expecting that mega. That was very that was very uh, surprising. I appreciate the the voice acting there, Ryan. I'm Turbert. trying. I'm a little. I, I have to admit, I'm getting a little bit nervous. This day is coming up. It's very fast, and it's not like we don't have nothing to say. There's a couple couple negatives in there. We got a lot to say. We got a lot to announce. We got a lot yeah. of a lot of possible changes and a lot of things to 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 be doing that are new. And I was reflecting on this on the Pants Patreon podcast for Patrons Podcast, which is exclusive to patrons at the $3 tier and up. And I was just kind of reflecting on sometimes that can be a little terrifying. It's all good. And we've been I, I, ideas, ideating. I, we've been thinking about ideas for a long, <laughs> long time. And now it's like go time. And that gets a little scary, like the rubber's hitting the road. So we're going to do this now, man. It's all good. I think we're going to put on a good show and I think, I think it'll so. be like ripping the bandaid off, Sean. Once once we get it over with, you know, and the and all the information's out there. Yep. I mean, then it'll everybody be awesome. leaves and then everybody yeah. leaves. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. So look out for that again. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 15th of April. YouTube.com slash Yumi Capri. For all yeah. Those. But anyways, let's grab our eight tracks, pop them in. It is time for the playlist. And uh, oh, my God, this will probably be the biggest segment of the show this week because uh, Sean, start us off. What'd you play? Yeah, I, like I'll, I'll talk about my games real quick. And I really like yeah. I, I love what you've been playing here. Um, I bought a while ago uh, Destiny 2 The Witch Queen, uh, which I knew ahead of time, by the way, that that game was going to review really well and has served us very nicely on Fantasy Critic. Um, mm-hmm. And I played it the day that it came out and I kind of dropped off. I've been very distracted lately. I've been sick twice over the last little bit. It's not been a super fun time for me. Um, but over the last, after we played Halo on Saturday, 
which may or may not be the last time we play Halo. I don't know, yep. man. People are not hyped about Halo right now. I uh, jumped into Destiny 2 to try to get, um, to try to finish off the, the Witch Queen campaign. Played for a couple hours with uh, Dev from PSVG and Jays from Twitch.tv slash Backridge. And um, I have a couple like really good friends, Sherpa-ing me. Sherpa-ing? Sherpa-ing? Sherpa-ing. Me. You, Sherpa-ing. Yeah. I don't know. They're they're taking me through um, the Destiny missions, and it's awesome. And I played again last night, and we finished off the campaign, which is great. But I'm still kind of a a ways off from being raid ready. And I have to admit, Ryan, this is the first time that I'm even like going for it. I've never it's it's never entered in my mind that I would even try to do a raid. But I think I've now danced around Destiny long enough that I I, I might just do this thing. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm having a great time with it. The shooty shoot feels great. I'm playing on my PC, so I'm using the, the keyboard and mouse. I got the clicky clicks and all that stuff. It's really good. The game is just gorgeous, though, man. Like, I really am enjoying it. And I love that it's bringing people together, that we're playing together. But dude, like, it's such an interesting thing. We had a question coming in in the chat as I was streaming it. I'll get to that in that experience in a second. Somebody sure. had asked about like, is this a game that you could you that that people should play even if they're new to the series? And it's like, it's a hard question to answer. The, mm-hmm. On the on the on the plus side, it's a free to play game. You can just pick it up and play it. But there's definitely like moments, and as I'm streaming it, I'm learning the game either for the first time or for the fifth time because I just keep bouncing off of it and going like, wait, how do you, somebody explain this part to me again? Yeah, and that's. As a streamer, it's embarrassing, to be honest with you, to like learn it or relearn it. It's it's embarrassing to be doing that in public. It's also embarrassing and probably very frustrating to the people who have taught me these things before. And they're like, we've told you this before. And I'm like, I remember, but I just, I can't remember what the, like, I, it's not sticking because I don't play it obsessively. I play it for a couple times, you know, here and there. And then I go on to everything else. So that's, that's a little bit on the frustrating side, but Destiny is, is so good. And I, I'm excited to jump into the raid. I've been playing that a little bit, which is very cool. Yeah, uh, I will say yeah. uh, to kind of answer answer that person's question anyways, is my, even though I'm not someone who plays Destiny, I will say it just kind of depends on what you want, what out, you want of out of the it. game. Yeah. Because like if it, like I think it's probably easy to jump in if all you want to do is kind of blaze towards the end of the campaign you don't really care about the story and then you want to yeah. just jump into the raids and the end game content because yeah. i think that's it's probably good for a for a person like that mm-hmm. um but for someone who probably wants like a, a, a game full of with like a deep story and i mean don't get me wrong destiny has like interesting lore to it um but it's not really telling trying to tell you this like big epic campaign in the way that a lot of other single player games are so i think, I think it it's actually bigger than it. some of the single player campaigns but you really have to work for it like you really have and you have to pay attention and i feel like sometimes that's at odds with the fact that you're playing with people and i'm not Mm -hmm. sure how you how maybe you can comment in terms of like final fantasy 14 where you are playing with people and you've commented that that's one of the best stories of all time in video games yeah exactly but i mean i think that final fantasy 14 just has so much more of a focus on the story where the story takes the center stage and then the gameplay and everything else is kind of behind that story. Mm. Whereas destiny, I think kind of takes the opposite approach because I think that um, destiny is more about environmental storytelling or finding logs in the environment that tell you the story rather than being, rather than telling you the story outside of a couple cutscenes. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing that can be confusing for people because it would like the cutscenes might like indicate that yeah, f- story is first and foremost. But sometimes these cutscenes happen. And I'm like, I don't know, like, w- what am I supposed to take from this? Like, I'm hearing the words, mm. I'm reading them off the the subtitles and everything, and I, sometimes it doesn't really click. But the game is so good that it doesn't really matter, to be yeah. honest with you. And and so it depends on just like your style, and, like anybody's comfort with learning something new. Um, so what I tend to do, right, honestly, like especially with games with like complex systems, is I kind of just like hitting it a bunch of times. I keep playing it and playing it and playing until finally it kind of clicks and I figure it out. Um, Learning it from other people can be frustrating for everybody involved, I think, because like I I am in some cases, I'm a bit of a slow learner and uh, especially when I'm not obsessing about it. Like, like that's the other thing. Somebody who's teaching you, they've been playing this game for thousands of hours and I've got like 60 hours total of destiny Two since it came out. So I'm, I'm just on a totally different level with it, man. And that's just one of the hardest things about just jumping into a long time yeah. game as service kind of game yeah. like that, where it's like, where you just have so many people devoted to that game because it's a game as service. Cause it's encouraging you to do so that yeah. um, it might just be harder for a newer person to jump in. Um, but it sounds like at least you don't have to go through a lot of, um, 
hoops to get get where you're going and stuff like that. There's still, no. you know, some weird stuff with the menus, of course, that I personally don't love, but for the most that's part- That's why I play on like PC. PC. That's a huge reason I play on PC is because of all the menus. I don't want to be doing that that work with You the, don't want the virtual mouse cursor with your your deep your, It's uh, too much. Stick. It's too slow, and I need to just kind of, uh, yeah. That, so that's, and and it, and it reminds me of like the good old days when I played on PC, my Unreal and Half-Life days and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Or um, Star Siege Tribes, Sean. Dude, oh, dude, I need to, you're <laughs> reminding me, thank you so much, I got to download that. It's it's a free game. It's old, that was what, something we just talked about the other night. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I definitely missed out on that. Um, the reason I want to bring up Destiny 2, and maybe this is a transition to one of your games, is like, I'm curious on your thoughts on this. Like, I feel like Destiny 2 is like this first person looter shooter type of experience. It's like a first person kind of Diablo. But mm-hmm. there's another bunch of games that occupy a very similar space with those Borderlands games, Ryan. And, and there's a new yeah. one that I have my eye on and it looks awesome. So I'm curious on on Tiny Tina's. Yeah, so I've been playing Tiny Tina's Wonderland. So first of all, I mean, it's just refreshing that I'm just talking about games again, Sean. Yeah, because, you're back. Uh, I haven't been able to talk about games for the last couple of weeks because I've Same been here. in the process of moving. But I always feel like I'm making up for lost time by, with all the games I'm playing because I've got one, two, three, four, five games on the go with the moment. Good for you. So, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm having a ball. So Tiny Tina's Wonderlands was kind of the, the game that kind of got me back into gaming after I started, after I finished moving, where I, I kind of picked it up you know, on launch day. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, Sean, I've been having a blast with this game. It's it's a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and what I like about it is that it takes the borderlands formula, which I think is a really good formula. I agree, but I was kind of tired of the setting. Yeah. Borderlands like that kind of like post-apocalyptic or like desert planet kind of world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would throw it into Morrisley. And then it gives it this like really refreshing, like kind of humorous fantasy tone to it. Yeah. It's like something like fable, but less British humor. Sure. Um, and I think it, those two things really go well together. Damn. Sure. It's weird that you're, you know, shooting guns in a, you know, a medieval fantasy game. That's where awesome. You're fighting, you know, goblins and trolls and stuff like yes, that. Yes. I'm but down it doesn't for matter. it. You, yeah. Like when, when, uh, when one of the, cause you basically, as the game starts, you're basically sitting around like a D and D table with two other characters that are playing with you. And then tiny Tina, who's almost like the dungeon master. Um, they'll basically quip in all the time and ask questions about certain things. And the first time you're basically given a gun in the game, they'll, they ask, wait a second <laughs> this is a fantasy game what, what uh why is why do we have guns and she's like oh just don't worry about it yeah it was and in the trailer it. it's such it's so good i think that was that was a clip in the trailer as well it was like that and it won me over like there, it's it's actually really hard for trailers to kind of like convince me that i'm interested in the game like that quickly and that that is exactly that moment that it did it for me in that in that trailer for sure yeah, and I will, and it's also interesting with the way the gunplay works in this because they also added something new to the Borderlands formula, which is spells, where essentially um, you'll have an equipable piece of armor, um, and each one of them gives you a different spell that your character can cast, and they usually have a much shorter cooldown than your your overall like class ability. Yeah, that's that's assigned to oh, you. Oh yeah, um, and you can the way you can kind of uh, intermix them, like some of them have like large area effect of attacks, or some of them are um, just like a fireball that you throw at an enemy or sometimes you'll someone like a Hydra that fights the enemies for you. Like I love it. There's a lot of great gameplay variety combined with the, all the, the random weapons that you pick up that all mm-hmm. do different things. Um, like I basically have like a, a Magnum that shoots grenades that freeze people out of it. Yes. Right now. That's what I'm uh, talking about, dude. So I'm doing that while like my spell is summoning a Hydra while I'm uh, like a, a berserker and it's actually burr. Because I'm, he's cold. Stop. Uh, no. So it's like a frost oh, berserker, essentially. <laughs> um, so I basically got this big like war axe that I used to, to, to no destroy way. foes, and that's kind of my class ability. So I'm kind of between like mixing all those together, just makes like for a really fun formula. And I've been having a blast with this one, and I've talked about it on previous shows, especially the RPG cave, because we talked about Borderlands over there a couple times, and. My usual problem with Borderlands is I don't always find it. It's fun to play solo throughout the entire experience. Yeah. Like I find that it's usually fun to play solo for the first little bit. Mm-hmm. But then as you get through the game, it becomes harder and harder to play solo. Yep. But mm-hmm. I mean, I am 12 hours into this game, which is normally where I'd run into that problem. But I'm not running into this problem at all. I'm, I'm, yeah. I haven't changed the difficulty or anything like that. I'm still playing on, you know, normal difficulty and I'm not really struggling with any of the enemies. So I think like. I think uh, Gearbox has really tuned the game a lot better this time around for solo play. If you're going to go down that road, I haven't played Code Op yet at all, so I don't really have any, you know, co-op impressions or anything like that. Although Mr. Badbit did say he wanted to play co-op at some time. Yeah, it's so cross-play with like everything, that. dude. 
Yeah. They, so. they crushed it. And it's really interesting that they did that because when I bought Borderlands 3 and I was playing that, Chelsea and I, my wife and I, we wanted to play together. She always preferred PlayStation. I always preferred Xbox. And um, I was waiting for the crossplay thing to drop. They said it was going to happen. Then they said, ah, crossplay is Xbox to PC and that's it. And it's like, damn mm-hmm. it. Like that was so disappointing for, for me and my very unique and specific situation. Um, yeah. But I'm glad this one is, is across the board. Like you just sold me on this, man. I'm going to Nashville this weekend. I just told you I'm not bringing my, my Xbox with me, but I know Ed Placencia has been playing this as well. And I'm going to go see him. I'm going to meet him in person. Mm-hmm. We're going to touch. And uh, oh man, I kind of want to, I kind of want to play that, this game, but it seems on PC, okay. but I'm also playing destiny. How am I supposed to handle all this stuff? Right? There's, There's just too, too many much. games, Sean. There's enough too slices. Many games. There's too many slices, but, but tiny Tina, I'm having a great time with nice, it. Nice. I'm glad uh, I'm excited to, to hopefully finish it this week. It's, Would we play together? Would we, is that, is that a, if, is you, that a, if you get it, Sean, I will uh, and want to play together. We will play together. Uh, I'm we'll going to check time. on, is there a deal.com? And, well, while you do that, Sean, I should talk about the other games I played because we don't want this show to be a million hours long. Oh my gosh. Um, so I, well, I, as I mentioned on the show last week, huge shout out to friend of ours in the community, trucker sloth for yeah. actually providing me a game pass code. Cause I hadn't had game pass ultimate in a while. Cause I, I usually just sign up for game pass ultimate when there's enough games that I want to, you know, sign up for it. it. It's not really a financial thing, but I just don't want to pay $15 a month for a service. Of, if I'm not going to use it all the time, it's smart. Um, but he was kind enough to, to provide me a code as kind of a housewarming gift for when I'm moving into my new place. So I took advantage of that. Cause there were a bunch of new games that came to game pass last, last month, including shredders, which was the snowboarding game yeah. that unfortunately I was looking forward to it because I, from the pre-release coverage, it looked like it was going to play like a spiritual successor to Amped. And it does have shades of Amped in in some ways, but it just doesn't control super well. And I don't really love the way that the the um, um, the, the tricks are kind of mapped on the controller. Like, I, I just don't love the way this game plays, unfortunately. Yeah. And not only that, but it's like it's got this like really cheesy like story where you're basically playing is like two snowboarding YouTubers and this person's trying to use you for always that it's like, and it's full of like lingo that, that makes you, makes you want to pull out the, the Steve Buscemi, you know, Hey fellow kids. Yeah. Kind of, pretty kind cringy. Of meme essentially. Yeah. Cause it's pretty cringy. And I mean, I'm not even enjoying it from like a, you know, ironic standpoint. It's just, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not amazing. I, I, it's the type of game where I, I would have been more sad about it if it if I paid for it. But because yeah. I tried it on Game Pass, you know, it's just one of those things where I can put it down and not feel too bad. You about have it. Riders Republic instead. Like if yeah. you really need well, to Riders scratch Republic that is edge. just a way better game. Oh, I got to play that When it comes too. to Snowball. Oh, my gosh. So, um, and then I played Tunic. I played a little bit of Did that because I wanted to play the final game um, just to see if maybe, you know, it would oh. get its hooks into <laughs> me versus the demo, the demo version. And it didn't. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, 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 I can understand why it got the reviews it got because I think there are some great elements to it, but I just think it's not a game for me personally. Yeah, understand. Uh, but I wanted to give it a ch- another chance since it's on Game Pass. Um, so I did put well, it down While you're just well. playing all the games, you're just doing, I'm you're living life. The you are living your best life. I still got two more to talk about. Oh my Sean. gosh, I love well, it. Well, speaking of, you know, unironically enjoying, you know, cheesy dialogue, oh, I played no. the cinematic masterpiece <laughs> that is Stranger <laughs> of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Yeah. Uh, all about, all about Jack and killing chaos. Oh my gosh. Sean, I would, I'm happy to report I have in fact killed chaos. You killed chaos? Nice. I killed Good. chaos. Uh, Let man, there be order. Believe it or not, Sean, this was a game that after demo, after demo, after demo, it just wouldn't hook me. But when I got the, but when I played the final demo, which allowed you to carry your save over, I was like, okay, right. I played enough of this demo that I, I think I'm really enjoying the combat. So let's give the full game a try. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started playing the game and I couldn't put it down. Yeah. It was great. Wow. I mean, the story itself, super goofy. It's just, it, there's a, there's a lot more cringy moments like the, the ones you've seen on, you know, YouTube and, and whatnot <laughs> so be, beyond, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a fantasy universe where, you know, Limp Biscuit and uh, exists in it. So it's just like, what do you say? Limp Biscuit exists in this game? Yeah. Why? <laughs> what do you because mean? It do- Sean, you're asking too many questions okay. as to, you know, why, why things need to make sense with this game. <laughs> Good point. I mean, th- Good point. But, I mean, I liked some of the story elements because it, this is a prequel to the original Final Fantasy on the NES. Um, and wow. as someone who actually really enjoys that game yeah. and, and remembers that story really well, um, it was cool to kind of see the origin of like the main villain for mm-hmm. that game. 
Um, and they presented it in a really interesting way. Um, and the way that it kind of ties into the very first Final Fantasy game, I think it I think it ties in in a cool way. So um, as a longtime Final Fantasy game fan, I, I liked the game. I yeah. thought it was fun, but it was mostly for the combat. I think the combat itself mm. was really fun. Like if, if you've played uh, Neo on PlayStation, um, it was the same team that made those games that yep. made this one. Um, I think you'll be right at home with the way this game plays. It's a little that bit easier than That is not what Neo. I was expecting the game you would have compared this to from a combat perspective. When I think of that game is not thinking of Neo. Yeah. Like, Cause that's well, I mean, kind of com- Souls-like. That's kind of like Sekiro like kind of thing. Is. Well, this, yeah. is, this game mm. is kind of Souls-like. Wow. But it's just a lot easier on the difficulty versus... Sure you know, something like Neo. Yeah. Uh, but just deliberate con- combat. Yeah. Well thought exactly. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and it's also really fast paced, which I enjoy as well. That's one of the things I liked about Neo versus a, a game like dark souls. Right. So, yeah. Neo's Stranger great. In Paradise. I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. And it's a recommend for me. I think it's really cool. Damn. Despite the fact that the story just make, doesn't make any sense. Don't, I mean, just expect the memes to continue as you get further and further into the game. It doesn't, uh, some like, of them are actually pretty funny. It doesn't like desecrate the, the, the sanctity of final fantasy one. Like the fact that those are connected and this is such so, a, a joke on the, the surface. Thing. Here's the thing. If I would have gone it, gone into it, not see any of that stuff before purchasing the game. Yeah. I might've felt that way about it. But playing it, I mean, they've I mean, they've already come out and said this is meant to be a prequel, but it's not. It's a non canonical prequel. So it's separate from it. It's its own. It's like fan fiction. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So that's that, we're <laughs> nice. not playing like a Star Wars extended universe. I game, love it. Like yeah. Jedi Knight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? just whatever. So, like one of those yeah. busting one of those authors that did some of the other. Yeah, Shadows of the Empire. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So that that's kind of how I followed about it while playing. I like it. So it. That's why it didn't bother me. So I could get nice. past that. Okay, and then. The last game I want to talk about, and again, I'll, I'll keep my thoughts kind of reserved for this one because I haven't played too much of it. Okay. Um, because it just came out a couple days ago is Lego Star Wars, Speaking the Skywalker of- saga. Uh, this game is really fun as well. It's, uh, uh, of course, the newest game in the Lego Star Wars series, but it basically combines all nine movies together. But they totally changed the way the, the gameplay works in the Lego games this time around. But at the same time, they didn't also change too much for it to be unfamiliar for, from anyone who's played a Lego game before. What was they the last, kind of what this was the last Lego game you played before this? The last Lego game I played before this was Lego Jurassic World. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, the, the last one that came out before this one was Lego DC Super Villains, I think. Yep. Um, but I, I just didn't really play for more than five minutes. But uh, yeah, yeah, this game, Lego Star Wars, is really fun. Um, I will say, because I know certain people it may be on this call are having a little bit of FOMO because <laughs> because they're probably looking on their Twitter timelines and seeing a lot of people. Everybody's it, playing it. it, man. It looks amazing. Yeah. The, it, visually, it looks gorgeous, especially yeah. on Xbox, which is where I'm playing it. But I will say this is a game that I think you could probably wait for a sale on or yeah. um, wait until it comes down in price or, or just to rent it if you've got something like Gamefly available to you. Because um, you can get through the experience very quickly. Again, just I like every other Lego I forgot about libraries. What the heck? I'm going to the library right now. Okay. Yeah. You keep and grab it there. <laughs> but uh, Lego Star Wars, the Star Wars Soccer is really fun. It's the only game that came out this year, Sean, where you can play as Jar Jar and other members of the Unnecessary Dungan mention. Empire. Absolutely. Unne- nobody was wondering, <laughs> Ryan. I mean, it's uh, they give you Jar Jar very quickly, though, Sean. You get to play him as him in the second level of the Phantom. Menace, I have a question Sean. to take us away from Jar Jar. I have a question. Of course. So we've had Lego Star Wars games in the past. I just played The Force Awakens a little while ago. Is it just those games all smashed together or you mentioned like the, the gameplay is different. So does that mean like it's not the same thing? It's not just all the other games kind of smashed into one? Yeah, they actually completely remade, you know, because they've already done the three prequels and the three right. uh, movies and then Force Awakens. And they basically redid them for this game, essentially, because um, they made all the areas a lot more open um, and they also changed the way levels work. But in this game, what's different about other Lego games is that in other Lego games, you kind of have this open this like hub world uh, available to you. And as you go through that hub world, you'll move to a new level based off a scene a section from uh, the movie that it's based on. Yeah. Um, and it'll basically be like one pretty long linear level. This game is not like that. Basically, right. as you progress through the game, um, a- as you go kind of from planet to planet, you'll basically have these large open world areas that you can freely explore. Um, and there's a lot of like side missions and collectibles that you can find in the open world area. But it's basically just telling you, hey, here's the path to go to the next cutscene, And then it plays a cutscene, and then it brings you to the next kind of like open 
area yeah essentially um there are some boss fights or some sections with with vehicles as well that are closer to the the lego star wars traditional levels Mm -hmm. but for the most part that you're not really doing you don't have the traditional level structure that you do from in the previous lego games it's more freeform um and basically it it almost feels like almost like uh assassin's creed 3 which is a game i remember very well where it's like all right, go uh, go from this point to this point to trigger another cutscene. All right, now go from here to here to trigger another cutscene, and so on and so forth. Hmm. Like that's how this game kind of works. So it's interesting, but I like that how combat's a lot more improved in this game because it is a third person perspective game rather than kind of an overhead game where it yeah. feels a little bit less button mashy. Um, like when you're fighting bosses, like when you fight Darth Maul, for example, in Phantom Menace, oh, um, man. you have like dodge abilities and stuff like that. Cause he's do- doing a bunch of telegraph moves mm-hmm. and you're basically dodging out of the way of them the, uh, from them as well as you have a block button in this game as well as some other combat tools at your disposal versus the previous game. So it's a lot more involved on the combat side than previous Lego games. Um, so, but so it is definitely different. Yeah. Um, but no online, co- no online co-op on this thing. No, that's it's local co That's brutal. That's actually but terrible. Not only that, the difference this time around, Sean, as well with co- local co-op is that instead of just tagging in and ha- you both sharing, you know, the same kind of overhead screen, since this is a third person game, it's split screen when you do co-op in this game, which is different yeah, from other Lego games. Some, some have done it and some have done it a little bit differently too, where um, you'll have, you'll share a screen. And then when you veer off together, you'll have like this dynamic kind of splitting. Yeah. I think I saw that in some of the Marvel ones. Yeah. Uh, Whereas maybe, this one, it's just straight up like horizontal or, or vertical split screen where you each have it. And I think, I actually something. think that might be better. I wondered if they were going to stick with that dynamic one. I don't know. I'm, I'm not yeah. entirely sure about that. I mean, it's less arcadey, but, but I, yeah. I'm going to talk about it more in the coming weeks. Cause I still don't know how I feel about, the level of structure being what it is because it right. almost, again, is trying to encourage, you know, exploration more rather than, you know, going straight to the next, the next cut scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of miss like the linear levels from the previous game, but I don't know. I'll talk about that in a, in a few weeks. Cause again, we we've talked about this long enough. We should probably get to some of this news before we run out of time. So let's slam the brakes on this conversation. Cause it's okay. time for some bu- 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 breaking news and uh, not a huge news story week, but uh, we got some cool stuff to talk about. First up, the following games are coming to game pass over the next two weeks. We've got cricket 22 MLB, the show 22 and Chinatown detective agency are all in game pass today, right now at the time you're listening to this. And then on April 12th, we are getting life is strange, true colors, Panzer Corp 2 on PC, and then the Dungeon of Nailbook on PC as well. That actually came to console last month, but the PC version is actually coming this month. And then Lost in Random comes to EA Play on April 14th. I mean, Sean, how do you feel about this lineup? Because personally, I think Life is Strange is a great get and it will be the show or a great get. And I don't know too much about a lot of these other games, but what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you. And it's a, it's a weird thing to like my my where my gut is. And if you say, like, what's your reaction? My reaction is kind of like a eh. But then yeah. I look at it like I really do. And I go like MLB, the show should still be considered a great get. And we should mm-hmm. be really happy with that. And I'm seeing a lot of people play it. They've actually got a code for it that we might do some sort of giveaway for. But I've actually reached out to a couple of people. I'm like, hey, man, like, are you, uh, do you have, like, what's, what's your interest in MLB, the show? They're like, I'm playing on Game Pass. I'm like, I can't give this thing away. Everybody's <laughs> logged in on Game Pass. So that's great. And it seems like people are playing it. It seems like it's really great. Um, also, um, we're going to have a review coming up for that also on the uh, on the PlayStation Drive as well. Maybe yeah, it'll show sh- up here. Is it going to show up on the feed? It should be up by the time you're listening to this. Oh. And it will be on both feeds. Okay, very cool. So, yeah, lots to love about that being available on Game Pass. And I wish that was the case for more sports games. Um, Cricket 22. I just don't know enough about Cricket to get excited about that. Like, I, I yeah. It just seems like, I don't know, it doesn't really land for me. Um, but Life is Strange is hitting at the perfect time. You and I talk about this often, in particular with this series, in that I don't typically just, like, get excited. Like, I, I just don't feel hype about Life is Strange. And it has absolutely nothing to do about the quality of the game or anything. It's just, like, it's a very emotionally pulling kind of experience. And it, it demands a lot, at least for me. And I want to give it more than just I'm playing the game, which... Sometimes that happens when I play a game just when it comes out. So the way that I've kind of just amended for that is I play it when I'm feeling ready for it. And actually, at this point in time, like, I'm kind of ready for a Life is Strange kind of experience. I kind of, I don't really want to, 
I don't want to get too crazy into a game. And that's some part of the jarring experience I'm having with destiny is like, I'm, I'm having to retrain my brain because I'm kind of in the mood for candy crush and Kirby, to be honest with you. So <laughs> life is strange. I think we'll hit at the exact right time. So I'm pumped about that, but literally nothing else. So what do I really want out of these things? Like, do I want, like, I'm, I should be happy. I've got life is strange. That's what I'll be playing. Somebody yeah. else and a lot of other people are playing MLB the show. So they should be happy about that. Seems like there's a lot of variety. So people should be happy about that too. And yet still, all of that said, you look at this list and it's like, well, there's no, I don't know, like call of duty in there. There's no, like, there's no banger. I don't think, right. but it's a really good list. So I just wanted to kind of explore that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, like MLB the show again is is considered a banger, banger to a lot totally, of people, to, totally. especially for baseball fans in particular, because it's a day one triple A title. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Like, it's a game that doesn't appeal to everyone because yeah. not everyone likes baseball. So well, look at all like, the other games you hard. just talked about. I wish those were coming to Game Pass. Like, yeah. I wish Tiny Tina's was coming to Game Pass. I wish oh, if you could I, imagine that game in Game Pass with like crossplay. Ooh. That that's what I mean. That would be like, amazing. Those are the gets that like uh, things are drying up pretty quick here on Xbox land and there's lots of games coming out and I'm subscribed to Game Pass. And yet here I am looking at I got to buy that one and I got to buy that one. And so if I can be a little whiny about it for a second, it's like I I, I don't know. That's kind of the, the lens I'm looking at this through. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm. Well, Speaking of Xbox land drying up, we should talk about the game. Oh, leaving no. game pass on <laughs> April 15th, we got MLB the show 21 because duh, it makes, makes sense because we got the new one rain on your parade, the long, dark pathway. And then on April 18th, I know you're sad about this one. F1 2019. Ah, oh, come the on. 2019 version of F1 is leaving game pass. It's okay. Didn't 22 just come out into game pass? I, I think, think it did. Yeah. So that's why it's like, yeah, this, you're good. It seems weird that the 2019 version one is still there, but sure. So mm -hmm, there you go. Mm -hmm. Those are the, all the I games. Try those games still can, I guess, but maybe I'll try that uh, game out. F1. Maybe. I also, I've been hearing good things doing? about Chinatown Detective Agency as well, so I might actually try that game as well. There you go. Like, that's what I just I need to I need to leave all my responsibilities. I got way too many games to try out, man. This is hard. Yeah, you just leave them for me. I got lots of games. Oh, <laughs> lots dude. of time to play. Games. Live your life. <laughs> well, speaking of new games, this is a, this is one of the last news stories I want to talk about this week. Devolver Digital and Lucasfilm oh, Games have man. announced a new game in the Monkey Island series, Return to Monkey Island, which will arrive sometime later in 2022 is being written by original series writer Ron Gilbert and will be a direct sequel to the secret of monkey Island Two: LeChuck's revenge. Apparently though, according to, to Gilbert, he did say in an interview after this was announced that all the other games after that are still going to remain canon, but this is like, it's, it's almost like starting a new timeline kind of thing. Interesting. That's what he wanted to do with this. Yeah. But, uh, what, what do you think about this news? Because I think this is crazy news. It is. I, it's something I never thought would ever happen again. Yeah, to, to have a point and click adventure game, like give new life and not a remaster or something like is actually a, a new game. I'll be very yeah. interested to see how that formula works. If there's another way to approach it, it did seem very formulaic. You know, once you played one, you kind of understood how the rest of these are going to work. Is there something that they can new to bring to the table? And is that even what people want? Or do they just want classic um, Monkey Island stuff? And for people who don't know, these are some of the most witty, well-written, well-voice acted adventure games that ever existed. And I think for, like for those of you who aren't ancient like Ryan and I, um, yeah. they're definitely well worth your checking out, but they, they're a product of their time. You know, we were into this sort of thing. We're, we're po pointing our mouse at all the things. You're just seeing like what what we might be able to pick up or interact with. And so I'll, I'll be interested to see how that works out. Um, and also, I want to I didn't I didn't actually get a look to to look at. Was there any visuals that they that they there put? was just a quick cutscene trailer of just a pirate, basically a pirate a skeleton pirate just sitting there, just sharpening. his. And is it hand animated skeleton. like the old ones? Like, is it like hand drawn? It looks like it's hand, hand drawn. Yes. OK, so they're like that's yeah. the that's definitely the back to that TV style. They're not yeah. doing the telltale thing because remember telltale actually did a monkey island series that was 3d right yeah yeah that and that was, was that was okay. the hallmark of like a game that was worth your time like it better had good graphics and if it was to like fighting games did this for a little bit too like you can't just have a 2d fighting game it's got to be 3d and you kind of yeah. learn after time that yeah maybe the regular formula is best serving to that genre i think that's yeah. the case for that too yeah, exactly. So I, this one I'm also excited about. Um, I am worried that they might go back with some of the old logic for, yeah, for man, things, it's again, especially if you go back and play Secret of Monkey Island now, mm -hmm. like the, some of the logic in that game, like that's the one where you have to take the fish and use it to as like a, a substitute crank handle to then, you know, open a crank and you're like, when would I have ever thought to do Honestly, this? yeah. Yeah, 
um, because they did actually re-release those on Xbox 360 mm-hmm. on Xbox Live Arcade. And I think they're actually backwards compatible, if I'm not mistaken. So, dude, I remember playing Grim Fandango, and like the revelation in that game was that Manny would look at something that he could interact with. Like you'd be walking around, and then he like his head would shift and look at something. And you're like, oh snap! At least like that was the hint. And it's mm-hmm. like, holy crap, man! A little, little more. Like I now we're now we're hitting right, we're hitting on, down on the right sticks for like detective mode and and <laughs> whatever. You can see like everything kind of kind of appears there as well. Yeah, exactly. Right, Tomb right. Raider though. Can I, we talk about Tomb Raider real yeah. quick? I know we're short. Uh, on I was time. just about to bring it up. Okay. Let's quickly talk yes, about Tomb, Tomb Raider. You go. You so go. they Crystal and I, Crystal Dynamics have announced during the Unreal Showcase that there is indeed a new Tomb Raider game on the way being developed by them on Unreal Engine 5. Sean Capri, what do you think about this, Go? Tomb Raider is one of my favorite series. I love this. I didn't know what was going to happen. I felt like the three games were, what, that was it. I don't know. Do we get any more information about like, is it, a, they is literally it another said refresh? Else. Is it just like, uh, it's just a Tomb Raider game? Like, I just it, gave you all the information they gave us. <laughs> like, I just want to know, is it Camilla? Like, is she coming back? She was great in that. Like, I just, mm-hmm. dude, I'm so happy. I think this this team is really talented. Um, And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited about it. I actually thought that there was a lot more information that came out of this Unreal Showcase than I was expecting. And mm. just gives us a sense of maybe even how long this generation is going to be. Cause like they're just coming out with this engine, which seems like it's going to power this generation, but like we're a year and a half into this sucker. And it's like, in exile has got a game coming and coalition had their thing, which I think also looked really good. And all these other developers are starting to work with the unreal five. So, well, they just actually announced during the showcase that anyone can now get unreal engine five, right. And pay them for it, which is something that wasn't available to all developers until yesterday. So starting so, now, basically so starting right now. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of those games are really far away, including this Tomb Raider game. Like, I think it's probably like, at least three or four years away. I just like point, that. Especially. It, it, this gets into the, can you announce a game too soon? I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I go back and forth on this. I like that this is, that this is happening. Yeah. I, I like that there's, again, it just makes me want to play Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider all over yeah. again. Well, you can play it on PC now, Sean. Oh but, my gosh. Uh, what do you mean I, I mean, can play it on PC? I mean, you can play it on PC now with your, because you're playing a lot of games on PC. Is, is it in Game Pass on PC? Like I got, like I have it no, on Xbox. No, you probably have to go buy it on PC, okay. Sean. But I'm okay. just saying, it's an option to you. But did you see the no, coalition but, thing? Did you see the the video that the coalition did? I did not. No, uh, it looks odd. Like it's just a like a few few examples of like actual gameplay or like in engine stuff. You should definitely check it out, man. Like it it kind of gives you a sense of maybe what the next Gears game is going to look like or whatever the the coalition yeah. does next. Very cool. Yeah, we know that we we know that they've got that smaller new IP mm-hmm. that's coming out first before the next Gears game. But I don't imagine that's on Unreal Engine Five. I think that might be on another engine and then gears you know six will probably be their first unreal engine five game the coalition we'll find man, out. there's a couple developers like first party stuff in xbox land that like those developers i think ninja theory is another one of these ones that like and the coalition finally they can just like elevate finally we can like put to rest this conversation where it's like only sony's developers are are world class and like everything in xbox land is second tier i don't I, i've never believed that necessarily but i also think that now is the, especially the coalition's time to shine so i was mm-hmm. excited to, that while there was a spotlight on this very important engine to the industry that coalition was part of that conversation it wasn't entirely dominated by one side or the other for sure all right let's let some of our friends in the car with us it's time for the carpool we're going to start with brian s on the discordia who asked the question what's a game that you really want to get but you don't have time for right now for <laughs> me it's lego star wars to yeah the devil yeah um brian i had a chance to think about this one and ultimately the one that i really missed that came out last month that i really want to play let's just say joe i i'd rather play the games i'm playing right now for, uh, and first is uh Ghostwire Tokyo. I know it's oh, not yeah. on Xbox, it's on PlayStation. Um, but I love Tango Gameworks and Shinji Bikami. And that's a game I've been looking forward to despite kind of the mixed reviews for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's one I want to check out, but it's just like I just know I just don't have the time for it right now. Um, with everything else that I'm playing, I'd rather get through that stuff first before getting to that one. But that's definitely like on my radar for games to get to. And yeah. then Kirby is another one. Oh yeah. I haven't picked up Kirby yet, Sean. So oh, you could fire through that man. at some point, but uh, Sean, what about you? How, how, I, like we don't even have time. I don't even have time to list the games that I want to buy, let alone play the games that I want to play. Um, like all of them, dude, everything that you just listed, I want to play that. I miss dying light. That's a huge regret for me that I actually, uh, I might try to pick up from the library. Perhaps I think I'm going to avoid Elden Ring for now. I just don't know if I need mm-hmm. that really in my life at the 
moment. Um, I appreciate that everybody is loving it, but I'm not really sure about that. The evil lobster talk with Joseph last night totally scared you off. Oh didn't it? man, I just I don't know. I, I and it, it might be very similar to um, what I talked about with like Life is Strange, where I just maybe I'll just need to be in the mood for it. Um, mm-hmm. Which I'm not sure exactly what masochistic mood I would be in to go like, yes, that's what I need right now. That's the itch. Whenever I need. you're in the mood Scratch. for hand spiders, Sean, that's when uh, you go start. Man, my, I, my wife was on a photo shoot uh, recently and she stepped on a spider's nest and like had them like crawling up her leg and oh, like, like her, her foot is a disaster. And she, oh God, totally disgusting. But Lego is like top of mind. Absolutely. Uh, man. And we're just, there's more stuff coming. So I don't know what to do with myself. I guess I'll just play destiny and Forza horizon five. Yeah. Well, at least we're getting the the slower season with April and May. There's less games coming out, but like I got Chrono Cross coming out on yeah. Friday. 13 Sentinels is coming to Switch next week. There's yeah. Just, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Nintendo Switch, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports. At the end of the month, mm-hmm. got to throw on that leg strap to play some soccer. Yeah. Man. Oh my goodness. It'd be a great day. Yeah. All right. The Muffin Mon on Discord asks, has either of you been watching the Halo TV show? And if so, what are your thoughts? Uh, Kevin, believe it or not, I actually decided... We're at this. Uh, we're far. We're two episodes into the Halo TV series, and I've basically decided. You know what? It's far enough in that I'm just going to wait until it's all. Yeah, it's all out before kind of binge watching it. Later. Yep. So yeah, that's I, what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the exact same thing, and it's just in line with the way that the 30 day trial on Paramount Plus is going to work. Um, so I, I don't want to. I don't want it to run out. I don't want to feel like I'm on the hook to keep buying it. And also, I saw like a cool trailer for Star Trek that that Picard show, which is on mm-hmm. Paramount Plus. So like maybe I'll tie those kind of things in together. I mean, it's got everything Star Trek on it, Sean. Yeah, plus, totally. Plus it, it'll give you the ability to rewatch Top Gun over and over again. So there's Dang, lots of Dang, I love that movie. There. Holy crap. All right. Next up, TPR asks a related question. <laughs> what would Master Chief look like shirtless? Are the Spartan super soldiers able to do such a thing? Or would it just be wires and circuitry? <laughs> I mean, they're not robots, TPR. I mean, I imagine, neither, you know, they've got, still got some skin there. Yep. I mean, I would imagine it's probably probably just a really buff, you know, chest is what you'd see. Yeah. Maybe with some wires poking out, but that's what I think it'd look like. What do you think, though? Very specifically, uh, they have a 14 pack, not just a six pack. They have a four. They have abs that go all the way up to their damn chin. Um, they have a third nipple. All this genetic mutation doesn't come along with uh, some accidents. And actually, the, the third nipple's on the back. Um, of so, yeah, well, well, that's probably... All I That's should say about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last question of the week comes oh, to us from Joey Splats. They have zebra stripes too, right? <laughs> Good lord. So Joey Splats asks, serious talk. I love Xbox mm. in my Series X, but it has been a year and only half uh, with only a handful of games. And the games that do come out are not lasting or are unfinished. Is it time to swap for a PS5 and get a Series S for when the big hitters come? I mean, ultimately, Joey, we're not going to I, I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. Damn. At this point, I mean, I think there's some good stuff that is going to come to Xbox. It's still a little, you know, a little bit of a wait. But as someone who as someone who has a PS5 and Sean can kind of attest to this as well as a recent PS5 owner, I think they, there are some good games on PS5, but I think it almost might be better to wait for them as well, because I think a lot of them are still coming over there, too. Like we've got some good stuff like uh, Grand Turismo and Horizon that just came out this year, but beyond that what else are you really playing on ps5 that you can't play on xbox but unless you're you're playing a lot of weeb games like i do because there are some weeb specific games that are only on playstation <laughs> versus xbox but what what do you think about this question john because i personally think you know joey joey's putting the ps5 a little bit too high on the pedestal oh okay it. that's it. i mean he's definitely right to call xbox out for this and uh, in terms yeah. of first party stuff and we've talked about Absolutely. that a little bit i'm curious on the swapping like exactly how that's supposed to work out you just like walk into a store give them back your series x and they give you a, a ps5 i don't know if it's quite that simple either um mm. And I, I wonder too about like the overall experience for for Joey. Like I I was very frustrated with going from PS4 to PS5. I think that was that was not a good experience. I don't like that there's not smart delivery. So it's not it's not necessarily like apples to apples. It's not exactly saying you're gonna you're gonna be exchanging frustrations really. Mm-hmm. So and that's all being said about video games. You're gonna have a great time really in either case. Um, but yeah, like like you said, there's a lot of third party stuff. All the games you just talked about, I really want to play. They're all third party. So mm-hmm. I just wonder. I, I, it always comes back to this anytime we talk about the two consoles. How much weight do you put into the exclusives, and how often do they have to come out? I think Starfield's going to be great, but it's very long ways away, and I understand mm-hmm. that. But Game Pass is still the best value in gaming. 
That's yep. all there really is to it. And the best way to play those games is on a Series X, in, in my personal opinion. PC is very close behind, but they don't have all the games. So you just kind of have to be careful which wish war. But I would not be getting rid of a Series X at this time, personally. Yeah, not only that, but it, like, it'd be hard to even probably find a PS5 right now anyways. So you might as well, you may just, well, wait while you have what you have and maybe buy a PS5 after you save up some money. I did see, Joey's in the UK, available. I did see that Series X is like, it was the number one selling console in March over there mm-hmm. in the, over there I in imagine the we actually see something similar in North America because they are much more common now, Sean. Yeah. I've been seeing them stay up for a couple days now. Yeah. Online, well, so. some people will say that, that that means it's just nobody wants them. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, Xbox or it means is dead. they actually made enough of them now. Exactly. But anyway, Sean, we got to get going. But before we go, Sean plugs. Go. Man, what a fun episode. I talked about zebra stripes on the freaking Master Chief <laughs> on his skin. We'll see. We'll see. Although I think we've seen the scars on his back. You can find me yeah. on Twitter, maybe if you want, and on Twitch at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery, Capri like the pants. And uh, we'd love for you guys to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash me Capri. There's a ton of exclusive content at that $3 tier and up. Ryan Turford. As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. You can find us on Twitter at Yumi Capris on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Yumi Capri and on podcast services around the globe. Also, don't forget about Yumi Capri Day, April 15th, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Yumi Capri. So for Sean Capri, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 234 of the Xbox Drive and we out. Bye. 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 The Xbox Drive is fueled by patrons at patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. And from the bottom of my heart, I am so grateful to the more than 70 patrons who support us each and every month with a special thanks to our Capremium producers, Dallas Ford, Lee Navarro, the fearless leader of the Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life team. You can join me and the rest of the Phoenix Overdrive team at extra-life.org and raise money for the kids. And Jonathan Brown, the man behind the music on this show and the Nintendo Drive, you can download his latest album, In My Element, on Spotify and Apple Music. Our platinum producers, Robbie Bobby Miller and Trucker Sloth, and all of our gold members, Argo, Brendan Myers, Dallas Robbins, Dano, Emily O'Kelly, Foolish Fuji, Joel Brooks, Jose Jimenez, Mac Time, Marcus O'Neill, Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots, RJ Kern, Skinny Matt, Tony Baker, and Xavier Reyes. If you'd like to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Capri and choose the tier that works for you.